Welcome to the Meditation Conversation, the podcast to support your spiritual revolution. I'm your host, Kara Goodwin, and in this episode, I'm so delighted to welcome back longtime friend of the show, Michael Massey. Michael's the resident modern mystic on the podcast, and in this episode, he talks about the great uptick in humanity's consciousness that he's witnessing at this time. We talk about how this is showing up and what it means for the future. And we'll get right into that in just a sec. I just wanna quickly mention something I'm really excited about. Listeners of this show will know that I love homeopathy and I'm particularly fond of best made homeopathic remedies. Well, they have a homeopathic pet division called Healthy Animals Forever. Through episode 291 with Lisa Tully, I learned so much about homeopathy for animals, and I'm so excited now to have found Healthy Animals Forever as a trusted source for my pet's health. I love that I can gently and naturally bring my pets into holistic wellness. Use the link in the notes to try Healthy Animals Forever for yourself and use code CARAG10 for 10% off. Likewise, the code CARAG10 gets you 10% off at Best Made Homeopathic Remedy for the people in your life, too. And now, enjoy this episode. Welcome, Michael. Gosh, it feels like a gazillion years since you've been on here. It certainly has. Yeah, it's so good to Uh, be with you. It must have been about late. I know. It seems at least six months, I think. Has it been that long? That can't be right, maybe. but maybe time it's... is like nuts right now. It goes so fast. So no, have I not? I don't I think I've had you on since episode 300. And I know this week I released like okay. over 330. So. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow, you've been busy. I know. It's been wild. Crazy. So I know. So what's been going on? Oh my gosh. Just it's just nonstop. It's but all great. It just feels like everything's accelerated and I don't know, but I got to see you not very long ago in Sedona. That's right. You were out here in Sedona. Yes. And for the Sedona Awake Awakening Ascension, Conference was that? The Sedona Ascension Retreat. Ascension Conference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that was amazing. And it was. We got to spend some good time together here in Sedona. And I had I just arrived back in Sedona, perhaps when the last time when we recorded three hundred. I think 300. so. I think so. I think you were in Sedona by then. Okay, well, it's good to be back here. I know. And yeah. yeah, and we had a good time together for sure. Yeah, and so we thought today we would just do a little bit of the state of things. And as we're recording this, it's the end of March, 2024. And how have, how's the year been going? What are you picking up on? And what do you see for the near future? Okay. You said the key word, I think you, did you say accelerating? Everything's are I, accelerating. Yeah, it feels that way. Yeah, it definitely does. Certainly time is a sense of thing. Part of that, of course, uh, just getting older, as they say, you know, the older that we get, the quicker time moves until at the end, it all, the whole lifetime is just a flash, right? Mm. And it's all over so quickly by the time we reach the end. And it's, it's certainly, it, it's amazing as we progress along this path. Now. There's this year itself, so can be marked like things. It's just an, a complete uptick in terms of the cycles. It seems like things that used to take a year take a month. Things that used to take a month take a week or a day. And so I've ex- experiencing that in a very delightful way through the course of 2024. Now, for those who tuned in along the way, last the last two years we've talked about some gates opening and that were accelerating the cycle and layering in a new operating system for humanity which i was calling the trinity based operating system but the movement or the evolution we as a species are going through in terms of our own consciousness which is graduating as a species like from being the two to three Mm -hmm. and 
this is really the evolution out of duality into looking at being able to look at things in a non-dualistic fashion. And this operating system, which has fully the doors open for it in 2022, it layered itself in into 2023. And then this year in 2024 has just been operating and adjusting to this new operating system. And it's a substantial upgrade. And personally, and as I've been going through this, it's almost waking up in a very natural way that childlike wonder of experiencing each day in the world around me in terms of looking at things with fresh eyes. And when we have fresh eyes, because we're having a new experience of the same things that we might've been having, but being able to see them in, an, in a new way, it makes for a really just a delightful experience of not know of yeah, not knowing, but having a positive expectation of what one might encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. So that's what, that's what I've been experiencing here in Sedona. And then I'm witnessing this it, in my network of the, the people that I interact with across the country is in their own way that they're all experiencing an uptick as well with various different levels of awareness of what's actually happening. Mm. Well, it's interesting because you talk about that you're noticing things that maybe used to take a year, take a month, and so forth. Do you have any specific examples to help people to understand that a little bit better from your perspective? This is where it fits into the principle of, of synchronicity. And where under the old model, if you wanted anything, then you efforted, you had to put in the effort for it. It, it, th this will always be, be true. It's always important that we take our own steps. So the whole universe isn't going to do everything for us as, as if we're not participating. Mm -hmm. So, but this is this difference from a personal efforting in under the new model, your priority is, or the priority is the alignment with the universe and then allowing that universal energy to, to help with the manifestation of physical reality. And so the closer that we are to our own core alignment and the truth and authenticity of, of who we are, then the less effort that it requires in terms of overall energy. And as, and the more that we're working with the whole universe, then it accelerates that that manifestation, thus reducing the time in the energy required from a personal standpoint in order to bring about a desired result. And this can totally just be in the, the common mundane things of finding a job hmm. and or work or a manifestation of whatever creative project that one has is engaged with is that the components of that actually coming in pretty quickly. Yeah. And it certainly did the case for, for me and just even my own return back into Sedona and what lined up for me in terms of, of income is, is just astounding the way that it played out. And it's the, it's like the, that closer that we get to sent to center, uh, the whole universe starts rolling out the red carpet for us. Mm. Yeah, you made me think of an example in my world. I'm leading a course right now on sacred geometry, and it's a three-part mm -hmm. course. And after lesson one, I had so many people who were like, I'm seeing the geometries in the clouds. I'm seeing the geometries in my dreams. I'm seeing it in my mind's eye yeah. when I meditate. And I'm like blown away that it's happening wow. so fast. Because there you go. That's a perfect. Yeah. I can't speed. remember myself when I started engaging with sacred geometry, how long it took for that stuff to happen. But I don't think it was in a week. 
I, and like I say, I can't remember if it was that fast, but I'm blown away that it's happening that quickly. So mm -hmm. there's something, there's a principle, also what we call planting seeds. Mm -hmm. When we're interacting with people, we plant seeds. You're talking about this. I'm just using a little bit different language because it's something that I've noticed also. And that, so you plant a seed, maybe you water it a little bit, but it's got to have time and all of a sudden it'll sprout someday. And then someone, all of a sudden the, say the person upon which that seed was planted has a breakthrough or epiphany that might've been from a seed that was planted two years ago, but it finally, whoop, it popped out of the subconscious into the conscious mind. Right. Mm -hmm. And now one of the things when I'm, I've been doing this for enough years to track the length of time that it takes between the seed plant and the sprout. Mm -hmm. And this is where the, the, where the acceleration comes back into play is that what, yeah, what wants to, it could take a year or two. Now it's just weeks or months, if that. Mm. And now you're experiencing what sounds like you're planting cedar and, and it's like you're throwing it in the most fertile soil or something and you're getting sprouts that are coming up within hours or days. That's, I love that. And what's, what strikes me so much with how you've worded that is that I'm preparing for, again, going back to the sacred geometry course, but I'm preparing for the final course. And as I'm doing so, because you can get really esoteric with sacred geometry. And so I'm, mm -hmm. as I'm planning it out, I'm like, how far do I take it away from just the, this is the shape and this is what happens in the physical reality and so forth to like these higher level esoteric teachings where it's like, I can't prove this with science, for example, but you can prove it to yourself. But yeah, I also know that I might, people might get confused. And so I keep coming back to that when I'm planning it, where I'm like, you may just have to plant seeds and let them know this may not really make sense yet, but let me plant <laughs> this seed. <laughs> and then, yeah. and then especially yeah. with this particular group, because they have been like just blowing me away. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's fantastic. And that's good to hear. And this is exactly the kind of thing I was talking about in terms of the reports that I'm getting from people around uh, that are all describing a similar kind of phenomenon of, wow, is, is how fast this works. Yeah. Are there, yeah, what other things it's, it's, are you picking up? I'm wondering about dreams, for example, or anything like that. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is, uh, he, my dreamscape backgrounds are not as fuzzy as they might, as they used to be. I, it's hard to describe that, but yeah, but it's, it's kind of like that in dreams that might have a tendency to be like portrait mode on your phone <laughs> where whatever's front and center, but the background is just kind of. And now lately, though, it's like the whole seed setting is crystal clear, which is, a, uh, which is fascinating. Hmm. So I, in any upgrades to dreamscape is, is, is wonderful. Yeah. Noteworthy. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I do notice, and then in terms of the reports that I'm hearing from around people is the, uh, no, a number of, uh, them reporting really potent spiritual dreams not that dreams are always spiritual but they're when they they're get into apocalyptic oh yeah apocalyptic type of dreams etc which is all like good indicators in terms of where somebody is at on their spiritual journey mm. so it's not let those are generally speaking are not necessarily apocalyptic dreams aren't about the collective the collective necessarily end of the world. Although what we are in is a bit of a collective end of the world in that we have so many of us as a collective, we're transitioning from one, one era to another, one age to another. And so there is a ending of the old age 
in the beginning of the new. And so in this time, there, it's natural that we have, we live in a time of the fulfillment of prophecies of everything that needed to be accomplished in, in the, that prior phase or era must come to its completion for us to, to fully move on to the next. Mm -hmm. And as such, then this is what's percolating this apocalyptic type of experience or thought systems within the collective. Mm -hmm. But like you say, it can be an indication on a personal level of just the old is burning <laughs> and, and your phoenix is rising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And for those who haven't been through the death portal yet, that's pretty much how it goes. And it's like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, I'm dying. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. wait a sec. I'm still here. I'm still me. I still exist. I'm still alive. And that's what it is. And it's like the, the, that which we are is, is, will continue to be as a people were uh, like that as well. And the world that we thought we knew is, will no longer be in a whole new experience that we, that is even beyond what we've imagined is bringing forth. And that's pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm curious. I believe that you've talked about the death portal in previous episodes. I know we've talked about it, but I wonder how clear that is for somebody who's listening because I'm guessing that there's a chance they'll think of a near-death experience or something like that. Uh, that's a that's a that's an example, mm -hmm. or the, probably the best example of transitioning through the death portal. But if you, but is it necessary? Is it necessary? Ultimately, no. What is the passage through the death portal? Yes. Is physically dying required? No. It's the thing is we can die to who we think we are and then be born again as we truly are. And that's the, it's not really a spiritual death. Uh, it's, but it's an e ego death, if you will, or a death where we transition away from what we identify as and where we no longer identify as being the voice in our head, where the, where the observer or the witness to the voice in the head. And it's significant in terms of that change. This is a game changer. It changes everything. Mm. So if it's not a physical death, would it be like a dark night of the soul? Dark night of the soul could be the catalyst that leads to this kind of experience mm -hmm. for sure. And other than that, it's a step in a stage along the journey. So we all got to cross it at some point. It's nothing that anybody can avoid. Well, I assume there are plenty of people who have avoided it because they haven't taken steps forward. <laughs> I love the... That's delay. That's not, it's not avoiding anything. Well, That's just lifetime. delaying it. Yeah. And then they will, then, then what happens is the moment when they actually drop the body is that's when they'll cross through the death board. But we can, this is the whole point of this is that we can go through it before them mm. and not drop the body. Yeah. But I just often use that expression. I heard Richard Ro Rohr say it, but I think he was quoting somebody else, but some people get older and wiser and some people just get older. So there are plenty of people on the planet <laughs> who are not, who are avoiding. Yeah. That. Yes. And, but they are just, they can't avoid it. They're just delaying it. And so, yes, there are many seeds that are still plunked in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but the way everything is going is what we're looking forward to is there's a coming event, if you will, where we hit that hundredth monkey kind of thing. It's that, and we tend to see this each, we're in the, the time of spring, right? Where you might see a few flowers or a couple of trees that start to flower. But coming up here sometime in the next three weeks or so, there's going to be that day where all of a sudden it goes pow. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden there's poof. And it's like all the, everything just flowered overnight and it happens so fast when it comes. And that's kind of the thing that's going to happen or foresee happening here with humanity is that there's the, 
the initial wavies, the early arrivers, et cetera. Then there'd be, there's a trickle more and then all of a sudden, boom. Yeah. Yeah. And then there'll be sprouts coming out all over the place. And oh, what a day of rejoicing that'll be. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any sense of timing on that? Uh, no, when we're to start, the more we talk about the absolute, then it's more, it's impossible to know the timing on that. Mm. And except that it just, it's getting closer and closer and closer. And so it, that's one of the things that's changed pretty significantly within the last six months is that this event is in my sphere of awareness, conscious awareness that I at pretty much all times mm. and so it's and it's drawing nearer so within my awareness it's like you know, it's encroaching in its orbit and other people are are seeing it too and more and more people starting to talk about an event that's coming and none of us knows for sure what it's going to look like but we are getting glimpses of it in our own ways of what it of what it's about. What can you share about that? It's a singularity of man that's significant enough that it becomes a new marker in time. So we just we basically reset the calendar so that there was before this event and then after this event. It's that significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You think about what it would take in terms of a global event for us to actually reset the calendar. It's that significant. Wow. Do you have any uh, indicators or pointers to sort of, it sounds like it will be really obvious as it's happening. Do you have uh, any, like. This is, I want to speak to once, to, to, when I say it enters my mind, it met into my awareness. So it's entered my awareness as me, Michael Massey, from what is going to happen in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. You asked about time. So it, whatever is going to happen, it's going to happen within my lifetime. Okay. And other, it's popping out into other people's awareness, and I'm able to at least to discern uh, the, which sphere, which spheres, because I can go into a greater version of myself where everything has always happened. But that's not what I'm talking about. That's in terms of its proximity. It's near. And if we were talking about the next 50 years or more, it's still, that's cosmically speaking, that's very, very near. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's going to take that long. So what would be some, I know you've mentioned like the Trinity consciousness where it's no longer dual. Are there other things that you pick up on that would be like a difference for the way that we experience life? Imagine uh, there's going to be an upgrade. It's an, there's an upgrade to your basic five senses. You can think we see a certain spectrum of color. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about an enhancement it's of, say, visual acuity to be able to see more of the spectrum. And it's almost like moving from a, up to a higher, higher depth vision. Mm -hmm. But the... Sensory inputs from taste, smell, and touch, all of that enhanced. So that's one way that, that this is all manifesting. And it's, it's at least a complete renewed joy in experiencing life here on this planet. Wow. Bring it. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we uh, we continuously yeah. upgrade our technology. Yeah, and now it's experiencing the, the upgrades to the really the most advanced form of technology that exists on the planet, which is this human body we're walking around in. Right, the human technology. Yeah. So tell us what you're working on. What's going on in Michael's world? It seems like we're at this really important period of time. And I've been asked a few times over the years if I would write a book or something like that. And so what I've done is this, I've assembled the last probably 12 years of my journey into a new program that I'm putting together. And it will 
be re uh, released in a book form. And what I'm doing is trying to distill everything that I've experienced down into a framework for really for achieving peace of mind. And when you were out here in Sedona, and one of the questions with the gals who were out here with too, and it was a, just a lovely group, and we were talking a bit about the difference kind of between awakening and enlightenment, right? Mm -hmm. How do you tell the difference? And now this might surprise you, but I'm going to turn to the wisdom of Yoda. Okay. And, and when he says, you'll know when you're calm and at peace. Mm. And this is one of the things that is, we're actually naturally tend to draw to, but it's the people in a room of who's at peace and who is quiet, who has the a quiet, still mind. And that becomes is probably our maybe strongest indicator. And so what I'm doing is assembling this framework for achieving true peace of mind. Mm -hmm. That's my gift to the rest of humanity is just to share what I've learned because it's a doozy of a journey to navigate through the mind. That's beautiful. So I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to share this. This is just my piece of the equation. It's not everything, but I hope to give it to you all and in the hopes that it'll help everyone to find their peace and then contribute that to the whole. Mm. Wonderful. That's amazing. Oh, this has just been great. I'm so excited to catch up with you and I'm excited about the work that is coming down the pipeline from you. And uh, what's coming for humanity, it's all beautiful and exciting. So thanks for coming on today, yes. Mike. And I, yes, I, thank you for having me. And for everyone out there, yes, the bales are thinning. And be alert and be aware of what's happening around you because the magic is all around. Mm. Well said. Thank you. Thank you.